Hello, friends. Welcome. What a strange summer this has been. You know, by this time of the year, we'd normally be hearing drumline warm-ups in the back of our head, anywhere, everywhere, all the time. Heck, I even stopped by the Greyhound station in downtown Indy just to get the smell of diesel fumes. But through it all, we had a DCI Hall of Fame election, and we're going to have an induction right here, right now. Our three new members deserve it. As the Hall of Fame chairman, it's my honor to MC the ceremony. Now, normally we hold this Wednesday night of Championship Week in downtown Indy. This time we're worldwide, which is another reason why we want to ask you to help us set the stage, to help the DCI Hall of Famers set the stage for 2021. The loss of this 2020 season certainly has created a lot of challenges for the Corps and Drum Corps International. As the umbrella organization, DCI is the Drum Corps. DCI really sets the stage for those amazing performances that we've come to love over the years. The tours, the stadiums, the educational clinics, housing, cinema shows, DVDs, Blu-rays, CDs, you get the idea, all the internet product. All of that and so much more is coordinated by Drum Corps International on behalf of the member corps. In a typical year, DCI Hall of Fame members contribute to a scholarship fund. This is no typical year. This year, our contributions are going to a DCI fund to help set the stage for 2021. DCI Board of Directors Chair Kathy Black hopes that you'll join us. Good evening and hello everyone from beautiful Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm Kathy Black and I am honored to serve as Chair of the Board of Directors for Drum Corps International. And I'm excited this evening to be able to talk to all of you in the DCI community about how important it is to keep the activity we all know and love healthy and thriving for decades to come. One of the joys of serving as chair is that every year I get to meet the incoming Hall of Fame class and their families, typically at a dinner that we hold before the induction ceremony in Indianapolis. Well, of course, unfortunately this year, we have to celebrate virtually for the class of 2020, but that absolutely does not diminish the accomplishments of Robbie Robinson, Sal Salas, and Tony DiCarlo. Congratulations to all of them, and I urge you to take more time to learn about their achievements and contributions to Drum Corps. The global pandemic has changed everything and affected everyone. The 2020 DCI season could not go forward safely, and we continue to hear announcements of cancellations and delays in the marching arts and the music world in general. We don't know exactly when and exactly how Drum Corps will return to the field. But there's one thing we do know, and that's how absolutely critical it is to preserve the marching arts for the future. All of us in the DCI community have benefited from the Drum Corps experience. We proudly exemplify the core values of Drum Corps International, and we know that young people will always benefit from pursuing excellence, caring for and respecting each other, and working together diligently and tirelessly. What we need now from all of you is support for the Drum Corps and support for the organization that for decades has created the stage for our talented performers. Thousands of us have marched at DCI events, and we all remember having our chance to perform in front of huge crowds that know and love Drum Corps. So on this night that we celebrate another DCI Hall of Fame class, we urge you to think about the stage that DCI creates and what you can do to help DCI reach its 50th anniversary and well beyond. Please consider making a donation to the March On campaign and join us again tomorrow evening for the March On Telethon. This is DCI Championships Week. Help us do what Drum Corps people do best, meet challenges head on and overcome them. There will come a time when horns and drums will again ring out across the night. With your support, DCI and your favorite cores will be there for that joyful moment. March on. Thanks, Kathy. Good words as always, and we appreciate your efforts on behalf of Drum Corps International and its member cores. 
On to the inductions now. Our legacy category brings us a new member who is already a silver medalist. That silver medal coming from the United States Coast Guard in 2006 for heroic action in the water rescue of a family in big trouble in the Delaware River. The medal winner was Coast Guard Auxiliary member Harold Robinson. Yep, that same Robbie who, uh, well, what he really did was put one and one together to make one. And that one really stuck. What a one it has turned out to be. Robbie was working with the Keystone Regiment when in the fall of 1974 he helped engineer a merger with the 507 Hornets. There were a lot of mergers back then if you remember and most of them didn't work out on a long-term basis. Well, the Crossmen have been a notable exception. First hitting the field in 75 with Robbie as director. In 76, they went on a southern tour where they did a pre-contest exhibition for the Atlanta TV station WXIA. Station managers were so impressed that they decided Atlanta should have its own group. Spirit of Atlanta was officially on its way to becoming a real thing. Says Spirit founder and fellow Hall of Fame member Freddie Martin, there has never been a doubt in my mind that Robbie was as responsible as anyone for creating Spirit of Atlanta. Well, like so many directors of that era, the core was a family affair for the Robinsons, and the house was the core hub. Heck, I even stayed in the Robinson house in the late 70s while on a writing assignment for DCI. Ladies and gentlemen, our newest Hall of Fame inductee, Harold Robinson.
Thank you, Steve, for those very kind words. And hello to all my drum corps friends. What an honor to be inducted into the DCI Hall of Fame. The drum corps activity means a lot to me. A lot of great memories, a lot of great kids, a lot of great travel and places that we have seen together in the United States and Canada, and a lot of money. In 1953, while in high school, I became very interested in music. I didn't know much at the time, so I went to my high school band director, Bill Mullen, who was also a member of the Archer Epler Musketeers. And he said to me, if you want to be in my band, kid, you should join a drum corps. He recommended a local drum corps from Newtown Square called the Tri-Community Cadets. I marched in Tri-Community for about six years and learned how to drum from one of the finest drummers of his time, Bill Reamer. During my time in Tri-Community, I met the love of my life, my girlfriend, my wife, my partner in drum corps for 40 years, and my partner in life for 60 years, my Charlotte. She never gave up on trying to get me inducted into the DCI Hall of Fame, and thinking back, she was always there to help me. Through my marching years, my judging years, my instructing years, and as a director. I believe that Charlotte shares a big piece of this award. As director of the Crossman, I have many, many fond memories, but one of the fondest is helping to start the Spirit of Atlanta in 1976. The Crossman and the Spirit of Atlanta started a long time relationship and it seems as though we were destined to help each other through the years. This all started when we embarked on a massive tour across the United States in 1979. We started in Altoona, Pennsylvania with six drum corps and wow, the spirit of Atlanta's horn line put me through the wall. It was the best I had heard to this day. By the time we got to Hot Springs, South Dakota, only two of us remained. <clears throat> this tour is where the Crossman and the Spirit of Atlanta sealed their relationship. Spirit lost their equipment truck in a freak accident in Wyoming when it was blown off the road by a strong wind and ended up down an embankment. Their buses were about an hour ahead and we had no idea that the accident occurred. They found out when the state police caught up and notified them of the accident. It was fate that the Spirit of Atlanta left before us. When the Crossman caravan came upon the scene, there was only two women from the Spirit who were frantically trying to salvage the uniforms and equipment. I asked the driver of the tow truck to please give us some time to empty the truck before pulling the wreckage up the embankment potentially destroying and crushing all the equipment as, as he did, and he did. I yelled to our kids to jump out of the buses and start picking up everything. I also yelled, no smoking, there's gas everywhere. They immediately responded and picked up the wreck clean. The Crossman kids were wonderful and I was so, so very proud of them to this day. We filled our buses and truck with all, all the equipment and we saved everything except for one drum and one horn. When we met up with Spirit an hour down the road, there were many tears, hugs, and thanks. We shared our buses and equipment truck to the next stop in Salt Lake City. <clears throat> As it would happen, we started having trouble once we got to California. One of our buses broke down, so our kids loaded in onto the Spirit's buses and they helped us get from Los Angeles to Colorado. At each Corps end of the year banquet, even to this day, a special award is given to the most deserving member. The Spirit of the Crossman Award and this story is told over and over again. We've exchanged Deltas and Maltese crosses and carry these symbols on the field at DCI Finals in honor of each other's Corps. It is an honor to be supported by my Hall of Fame nomination by Freddie Martin, a true reminder of the relationship between our corps. An epic story of how two competitive drum corps have remained close for 40 plus years. Even though I have mem many memories, this story will always remain in my heart as the finest memory of what drum corps should be all about. Other great memories while I was director of the Crossman included our first tour down south in 1976, our first time making finals 
1977, watching my two children become successful members of the Corps. My son winning three individual snare drum championships in 1979, 80, and 82. And my daughter, who marched for 11 seasons in the color guard, became guard captain in 1983. Today, my greatest thanks is to Fred Morrison, who moved the Corps from Westchester, PA, to San Antonio, Texas. He kept the spirit, tradition, and history of the Crossmen alive. Each year during spring training, a special history night is sponsored by the Crossmen alumni is presented to the new Crossman members so they can get a glimpse into the rich history of our Corps. At this time, I'd like to thank the DCI Hall of Fame Committee for inducting me into the class of 2020. To my friends, Freddie Martin and Jeff Sekte for my support letter and my dear friend, Bob Morrison for really seeing the process through. And to my wife, Charlotte, who is watching all these proceedings from above. God bless you, Charlotte. May God bless the Crossman, and may God bless the Drum Corps, Drum and Bugle Corps community. Thanks for the memories. I'll see you guys all in, in Indianapolis in 2021. Greetings. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. My most heartfelt congratulations goes out to the DCI Hall of Fame Class of 2020. Robbie Robinson, Tony DiCarlo, and Sal Salas. On behalf of the member organizations, participating cores, and all of the fans, the entire DCI community thanks you for all that you have given this great activity and continue to give. A special thank you to Steve Rondinero and the Hall of Fame Committee for making sure that these gentlemen are honored in an appropriate manner, albeit virtually for now. I'm coming to you from the Founders Room. You may recognize the faces peering over my shoulder from the very first DCI Hall of Fame class of 1985. When I come into this room and see all of the, these photos, I'm reminded of the amazing commitment so many people have given for so many years to preserve the drum corps experience. I'm humbled and I'm grateful that all of you have participated in some way at making this activity the significant, special, and important activity that it is for our planet. Robbie, you made mention of the fact that what Drum Corps is all about is Corps helping Corps. I couldn't agree more. In fact, since March, when we made that announcement to cancel the season for 2020, the Corps have been getting together on a weekly basis, and many of them have been talking between those weekly meetings to try to come up with ways to do everything we can to preserve the DCI experience. And part of that, of course, has to do with minimizing expenses, making sure that the current core members are kept engaged, again, albeit virtually, and to try to find ways to safely and very thoughtfully bring the activity back out onto the field once again. The uncertainty is real in regards to what's next for us. And we have a lot to consider to make sure that this activity moves forward. I've heard from many that what we do is important enough that we need to push forward. And we can only do that with your help. We have a March on Telethon tomorrow night. I hope you join us for that, where we can talk about this in further depth. But for now, let's celebrate these three amazing Hall of Fame members and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you so much, and remember, we will march on. Thanks, Dan, and we appreciate the sage guidance and leadership that you've provided for Drum Corps International and its member corps low these many years. On with the inductions now. To think this career started back in 1964 with the Stockton Police Commodores. He later became a Madison Scout and soon was revolutionizing the rifle lines of the late 70s. Sal Salas. Blue Devils Hall of Famer Scott Chandler, who first marched with the Scouts in 78, credits Sal as a guiding force in his artistic growth. Sal added rhythm. And he added theatrical character to the color guard. Who didn't love that Men of Madison swagger? He was also a drill writer, program coordinator, 
and an executive director. In addition to Madison, Sal's resume with the Glassman, Santa Clara Vanguard, Cadets, and two stints with Spirit of Atlanta, where he's currently program coordinator and artistic director, speaks for itself. To say that Sal was an early innovator who has stayed fresh and continues to innovate is an understatement. As DCI Hall of Famer Michael Cesario noted, Sal and his teams have created memories for generations of drum corps audiences in every decade since the 70s. Think about that. Sal's also helped mold generations of new teachers and judges as well. Looking at his body of work, I'm kind of surprised that it took us this long. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present Sal Salas as a new member of the Drum Corps International Hall of Fame. Good evening. It is an honor to be part of the 2020 DCI Hall of Fame. Thank you. I am truly honored to be one of the recipients this year. I first began my drum corps career almost 50 plus years ago. I was actually at a catechism class and the teacher there, Mrs. Ricky Mena, asked me if I would be interested in joining a drum and bugle corps. At the time, I had no idea what that was. And I said, sure. And she explained to me that it would give me the opportunity to learn to play an, a musical instrument. And I had my choice of playing drums or playing a horn. Again, I said, sure. 
I'd be more than glad to go. So that weekend, she picked me up and took me to that rehearsal. Needless to say, I was hooked. And here we are 50 plus years later, and I'm still hooked. There were many people who inspired me during the course of my years doing drum corps. There are way too many to list, and I you know, really wish I could name everyone. But there are a couple of people that come to mind that I would like to mention. I would like to thank my wife, Lou Ann Russell Salas, for being there, for inspiring me, and always encouraging me to do the best I could do. Michael Cesario, who has been an incredible mentor. He taught me what it was like to become a designer, to appreciate those things like costuming, colors, pacing, music. He truly did show me how to become a better designer. His passion for the activity is unsurpassed. What he has contributed to what we do will always be standard setting. One of the things that I learned from Michael were three important words, tradition, innovation, and state of the art. And I will always remember those as I go through my process designing for programs. There are other individuals that I would like to mention that gave me the opportunity to be able to create for their programs. Scott Stewart, Bob Wall, and Andy Davis from the Madison Scouts, Freddie Martin, Brad Carraway, David Kohili, and Chris Moore from the Spirit of Atlanta, Dan Atchison, Brian Hickman from the Glassman, Jeff Fiedler, and Denise Bonfiglio from the Santa Clara Vanguard. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me the opportunity to create magic, entertaining programs, and being able to create memories for everyone involved in the programs that I was able to be a part of. Thank you. There are several memorable stories. Some were good and some were not so good, but they were always valuable life lessons. There was one in particular that I learned from, and that was in my early design years, I was told by a pretty well-known instructor that I would never make it in this activity. Needless to say, I was devastated. But then I stepped back and I thought, why would I let an individual decide whether I would make it in this activity or not? So I picked myself up, decided that I was going to go forward and create the best programs I knew how to do. And that has been something that I have learned and a lesson that I have passed on to many young designers. It is our responsibility to make sure that we encourage and help these young designers become the incredible teachers that they can be. We need to be there to nurture them and to encourage them to step outside the box and bring new and innovative things to our activity. It is our part in our lives and our activity for us to do that. So that was a lesson that I learned that I consider to be a memorable moment that taught me how to be able to come back and be the person that I am today. There were other memories. Some of them are just the crowds going crazy, the members and the instructional staff, the administration, the parent support groups, they would cheer their drum corps on. When everyone came off the field, there would be members in tears crying because they were so excited. I will always remember those. Those will be memories that I will cherish forever. There's also a funny 
memories. There was one time that we were at a competition, and this was in Sunbury, Pennsylvania. The 27th Lancers were there, and the Madison Scouts. I was teaching the Madison Scouts at the time. George Zangali was with the 27th Lancers. So after the competition that evening, we were all around our trucks and buses, and George and I were kidding around. We were spinning a rifle, and we decided to have a competition. We were having a who could throw the highest rifle toss and catch it competition. So before you knew it, all the 27th Lancers were behind George Zangali, cheering him on. All the Madison Scouts were behind me, cheering on. So the contest began. Up went those rifles, and down they came. So we got to the end of the competition. The last rifle went up, and it came down and was caught. Can you guess who won? You'll have to wait to find out. Again, I think that this activity is incredible. And I think that we should be proud of everything that we have done. I think that it's important for us to be able to continue what we have done, to continue to create legacies and memories. Again, I want to thank you and everyone for this award. As a friend of mine said when he asked me to teach his drum corps, I promise you, that it will be an experience of a lifetime. And he was not wrong. This has truly been an experience of a lifetime. And I am proud to have been involved these last 50 plus years. Thank you. Thanks, Al. It's an honor to have you among us now as a member of the Drum Corps International Hall of Fame. Finally, Tony DiCarlo, one of our true characters. Tony DiCarlo, once a holy annunciator. A fitting way for such a quiet, low-key guy to start in the Drum and Bugle Corps activity in the late 60s. Yes, we know Tony can enunciate. The holy part is a little suspect. As the 60s became the 70s, Tony brought his drumming skills to the Boston Crusaders. You knew Tony had to be a drummer, right? He would return to the Crusaders and management in the 80s to help stabilize the Corps and to help with the turnaround. Then came Drum Corps East and growing that organization as executive director. Tony was instrumental in getting the DCI Championship to Foxborough Stadium and in getting the All-Star Drum and Bugle Corps in the Macy's Parade. And when DCI needed a new contest director, Tony was the guy for the job. A front-line, firing-line job that he continues to execute with flawless diplomatic tact to this day. Really, Tony has managed a, a really great many challenging game day situations in that job. He's done it with a level head and one foremost consideration, what's best for the kids in the core. That's always been his guiding decision maker. Tony's assembled a loyal contest crew that is committed to creating a level playing field and a positive experience for all of our core members. And he's also made Jill Moyer famous as the number sign lady. One of our true characters, I am happy to welcome Tony DiCarlo to the Drum Corps International Hall of Fame. Anthony, the stage is yours.
is Tony DiCarlo. I'm the contest director here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And what we're doing now is setting up the field in preparation for the competition tonight. I'm sorry that we can't be meeting as we usually do in Indianapolis, so I can tell you in person what an honor it is to be inducted into the TCI Hall of Fame. Steve Rondonero informed me that next year when we all get back together again, I can buy everyone drinks. You know me never to be for a loss for words, but I'm willing to make an exception in this case. It is truly humbling to be inducted, to be allowed to take up residence in the Hall of Fame that includes so many of my personal heroes and to be inducted alongside Crossman founder Robbie Robinson and the famed Sal Salas is simply mind blowing to me. You already know my background in the activity via Steve's introduction. All the things that I've had to contend with over the years would not have been solvable without the support of some of the most precious people I've encountered. Chief among them is my wife, Leslie, who has allowed me to play drum corps for the past few decades and has stood by me when the times are good and bad. Leslie, I could not have asked for a better partner to get me through some of the very challenging times. I must not forget the rest of my family, for they never discouraged me from giving up time to drum corps. I thank Dave Richards, George Oliviero, and John Phillips for writing their kind letters of support for my nomination, and I am beyond grateful for the support of Dan Atchison, Sue Keenholt, and the entire DCI office over the years. It would have been impossible to have me pull off my job as contest director without having them stand beside me and also their willingness to answer the phone at just about every hour imaginable. To the core directors and staffs, I've been able to do what I do because you've been there all the time before, during, and after the shows. You folks prove to me that there are a lot of people besides me who work hard and you do it all year long and often don't get the recognition you deserve. Without you is no us. I am in awe what you manage and put together each and every year. You are indeed supermen and superwomen. And of course, the drum majors and performers who give up their summers to bring up such great entertainment. You've graciously allowed me to experience your love for the activity from my position behind the stands. And I'll never forget your level of dedication to bring an entertainment to the masses. I've got so many stories from hanging around the judging community. I've got to say, they don't get enough credit from the masses for pushing the course to get better and better. Too often they're seen as the bad guys, and they're not. They are friends to the course, encouraging them to achieve their maximum potential. They are our unsung heroes, and they have enlightened me to some of the best places to eat on the road. All the contest directors I work with are almost never seen by the public. Yet, if it wasn't for them, we'd have no events to attend. People would be stunned if they knew how many hours the coordinators put in to produce each event. To Dale Antoine and the entire event staff, you have made me look good for so many years. I'm nothing without you. Your dedication and love for drum corps and the kids never fails to fill my heart with joy. Now, I can't end my little chat without addressing the elephant in the room. This virus has turned our lives upside down. It pains me to no end that we can't be together and that we have to put drum corps on hold for a year. But it would be pain for me further if we went ahead as normal and our precious members came down sick. We will get through this. I'm not sure how, 
but we will get back together again, celebrating all the good things about drum corps, enjoying the cores in the field, and looking forward to the future with hope and excitement. I love you all, and I all trust you'll each become an essential part of bringing drum corps back to the masses. Keep on supporting the individual cores. They need your support now more than ever. Keep the faith. We will see each other again. One day soon, we'll catch up on everything that's been happening in our lives. DCI strong, and I'll see you all in 2021 on the field. Thank you all. We will honor this group, the 2020 Hall of Fame inductees, with our 2021 group when we all get together in person again in Indy. It'll be nice to see our friends, won't it? Now that occurs Wednesday night of Championship Week, and it's open to everybody. As for 2021, we're certainly hoping this COVID thing is well in hand by then and we'll be free to do that drum corps thing that we love so much. But there is that huge financial challenge ahead for Drum Corps International. We'll be hosting a live three-hour March on a thon tomorrow night. We invite you to join with Hall of Fame members and all of the great brotherhood of Drum Corps nationwide and worldwide who've already given to help set the stage for 2021. Well, we always end the night with our current Hall of Famers joining our new Hall of Famers in a toast. So let me be the first to kick it off. Sal, Robbie, Tony, salute. It's a pleasure to welcome our class of 2020 into the Drum Corps International Hall of Fame. Robbie Robinson, whom many of us have known from those earliest years of DCI. Sal Salas, whom we have known for his many contributions over the years, even to this day. And of course, Tony DiCarlo, our official timekeeper and hardworking manager of all of our contests. We won't be in the same building. However, I have my bottle of Prosecco. Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. It's the Italian version of champagne. Here it is, and I will toast you tonight. Welcome to our friends Robbie, Sal, and Tony. And let's all get behind DCI so that our beloved activity can survive this worldwide crisis. We'll march forward and we'll march on, even while we look forward to being together again in the same building. So. Congratulations and welcome, gentlemen. Hi, my name is Denise Bompiglio, and here's to the class of 2020. Congratulations, and let's all march on to 2021. Dave Richards here. Robbie, this honor is long overdue. Sal, 45 great years since your start in Madison. Tony, my nominee, the Crusaders Conquest should be playing in the background. Gentlemen, look around, embrace the moment. Welcome to the DCI Fenthouse. Paul Lateau, class of 1999, to my friends in the class of 2020, welcome aboard. Here's to the Hall of Fame class of 2020. Sal, Robbie, Tony, you guys are all so deserving of this recognition. I look forward to 2021 when we can march on together again. William Harty here. Congratulations to our DCI Hall of Fame class of 2020. Sal, Robbie, and Tony. I look forward to seeing everyone next year. This year was, you know, kind of a strange year, and of course, we'll make up for it next year. God bless all of you, and congratulations again to the class of 2020. Scott Coder here. Congratulations, Sal, Tony, and Robbie. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. A toast to you, and a return to this wonderful bonding activity very soon. This is Ken Turner, and I'd like to take this opportunity to extend my sincere congratulations to the DCI Hall of Fame class of 2020. Best wishes to each of you and to our entire activity as we look forward to marching on in 2021. Hi everyone, Jack Meehan from the class of 1991. And John Meehan from the class of 2019. We're here to welcome and congratulate the DCI Hall of Fame class of 2020. Let's march on in 2021. Hi, I'm Marie Chapinski. Congratulations to you, class of 2020. Hi, I'm Jim Campbell. Here's to the 2020 DCI Hall of Fame class. Congratulations. 
Let's march on in 2021. Greetings. I'm John Phillips, DCI, Hall of Fame Class of 2015. It's my great honor and pleasure to welcome our Class of 2020. Robbie Robinson, Sal Salas, and my good friend, Tony DiCarlo. Here's to you, everyone. Congratulations, and let's march on in 2021. Hi, my name is Jay Bocook. And here's congratulations and a toast to the 2020 Hall of Fame DCI class. Congratulations. Hi, TJ Doucette here. Just saying hi and congratulations to the DCI Hall of Fame class of 2020. Hi, my name is Donnie Van Doren, and I want to congratulate Tony, Robbie, and Sal and welcome them into the DCI Hall of Fame. In your own way, each of you have made your mark and made a difference in this activity that we all love and cherish. But more importantly, each of you made a difference in the lives of many young people that have crossed your paths. I really, really wish we could all be together to celebrate this time with you, but we can't. So, a virtual toast to Tony, Robbie, and Sal. Congratulations on your induction into the DCI Hall of Fame, Class of 2020. Hey guys, it's Dennis. Just want to say congratulations to Tony for all you've done for Drum Corps on and off the field. Uh, to Sal, every place you've been has been success. And to Robbie, you started a Drum Corps a long time ago in Pennsylvania. That course still exists. So congratulations to all you guys and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Robbie, Sal, and Tony from the Doherty's. Cheers. Hi, Scott Johnson here, class of 2012. I want to say congratulations to the class of 2020. Let's march on to 2021. Hi, I'm Gene Montristelli. Congratulations to Robbie, Sal, and Tony for their induction into the Hall of Fame. Thank you for all you've done over the years to help the activity. Hi. I'm Bob Morrison, DCI Hall of Fame Class of 2019, and I'm here to congratulate the DCI Hall of Fame Class of 2020. So here's to you, Sal and Tony, and of course, my second father, Robbie Robinson. Congratulations to all of you, and let's march on in 2021. Hi, this is Charlie Poole from the Class of 1998, wishing the Class of 2020 my sincere congratulations. Sal and Robbie, your, um, your contributions to the activity are certainly noteworthy and uh, very much appreciated. And to my good friend, Tony DiCarlo, all the way back to our days marching in the drumline of the Boston Crusaders, congratulations. Hi, I'm Paul Rennick, and here's to the DCI Hall of Fame Class of 2020. Congratulations. Now let's march on in 2021. Hi, I'm Doug Thrower from Ontario, Canada. Congratulations to the Class of 2020. Looking forward to a prosperous and safe 2024. Well, greetings. This is Joe Morella, and I want to toast and congratulate the entire class of the 2020 Drum Corps Hall of Fame. A moment you will never forget. And remember, march on! Once more, Tony, Robbie, Sal, congratulations. Welcome to the Drum Corps International Hall of Fame. Let's all get together in person in 2021. I'm Steve Rondonero, Hall of Fame Chairman. Thank you for watching. Good night.